Based on archaeological findings, textual analysis, Dr. Francesca Stavrakopoulou argues that the ancient Israelites were polytheistic for much of their history. Not only that, they worshipped many gods alongside Yahweh. And the reason that I think that it's so important to understand this is that the Israelites would have borrowed, adapted, stole practices from the surrounding culture to create their worship of Yahweh. Yet at some point in their history, they go, oh no, uh-uh, Mm-mm. no, we have nothing to do with them. We don't even know those people when really they are the same people. Let's go through some scriptures. That proved my point. Our first contestant is our buddy David, who is dancing in front of the Ark of the Covenant in a manner that would be very similar to how Canaanites would practice, worship, celebrate their gods. Second Samuel 6, 5. Meanwhile, David and all the house of Israel, all the house of Israel, were celebrating before the Lord with all the kinds of instruments made of fir wood and with lyres, harps, tambourines, castanets, and cymbals. He was shaking his money maker. Let's not forget what it says about David in 2 Samuel 5.13. Meanwhile, David took more concubines and wives from Jerusalem after he came from Hebron and more sons and daughters were born to David. The redactionist history will come along and say, See, David was being tempted and he was fooled by his idolatrous wives to worship other gods. No, David was a king. Polytheism was the norm. Uh, with his dancing, it doesn't seem like he was being forced. He was dancing with the house of Israel, okay? So he's not just by himself being misled. This is a choice. This was the norm. That same story is repackaged for King Solomon. First Kings 11.4 For when Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart away after other gods. And his heart was not wholly devoted to the Lord his God, as the heart of his father David had been. <laughs> as the heart of his father David had been. That is history repackaged to make it look as though it's something that it is not. Oh, and also the fact that it is always the woman's fault that they worship other gods. <laughs> that shit is on purpose. So let me get this right. You don't mind fucking those women. You don't mind taking those women's dowry. You don't mind the connection that marrying those women gives you to other kingdoms and the power and influence. Like all that is good for you, right? To help you build your kingdom, to help you build your temple. But then at the very moment where you don't like your history, you just erase them and call all those women bad. That's how I feel about the redactionist history. <laughs> now let's read about King Josiah and his reforms and what happens inside of the temple. Second Kings 23 verses four. Then the king commanded Hilkiah the high priest and the priests of the second order and the doorkeepers to bring out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal, for Asherah, and for the hosts of heaven, which are obviously the other gods in the pantheon, the Bnei Elohim for all the hosts of heaven, and he burned them outside of Jerusalem in the fields of Kadron and carried their ashes to Bethel. Clearly in this scripture, even though the redactionists would have us believe that these gods were never worshiped side by side with Yahweh, the hosts of heaven, Asherah, images of Baal, etc., were in this temple side by side for hundreds of years being worshiped. And it's not until later where somebody comes along and says, no, that has nothing to do with this. Even though we borrowed all their beliefs and their traditions, we might even scratched off Baal's name and put Yahweh's name there. That's not us. We never did that. That is not the truth. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a lie. It's a history that never existed. Long story short, the Israelite religion did not happen in a vacuum. Their ideas were borrowed, syncretized off of other customs in the area from the Canaanites. So to now look back and say, Psh, we had nothing to do with them is a complete and utter lie. You would not have the religion and the ideas and the customs and traditions that you have today if it were not for those Canaanites and their beliefs. So it's pretty shit to now just erase them and other them and dehumanize them and say they're bad and that you were always good. The good people were the ones who followed Yahweh. Bullshit.